In the wee hours of August 2nd, 2015, dispatchers in Davidson County, North Carolina, received a very concerning call from a man named Tom Martins. He said, we need help. My son-in-law got into a fight with my daughter. I intervened and I think he's in bad shape. We need help. He's bleeding all over and I may have killed him. When first responders arrived at the home, they went to the master bedroom to find Tom and his daughter Molly Corbett performing CPR on Molly's husband, Jason. There was red fluid all over the floors, walls, and furniture. Jason was on the floor without any clothes on. He showed no signs of life. Paramedics took over and tried to resuscitate Jason, but it was too late. They pronounced him lifeless at the scene. Based on Tom's 911 call, there was no secret who did this. Officers took Molly and Tom to the police station for questioning. Tom, who was actually a retired FBI agent, said that he spent the night with his wife in Molly and Jason's basement. He claimed to have heard someone screaming in the middle of the night, which woke them both up. Tom rushed out of bed and grabbed his Little League baseball bat that he'd brought for his grandson and went upstairs to see what was going on. Tom told the police that he saw Jason wrapping his hands around Molly's neck in the master bedroom. He tried to get Jason to let go, but Jason told him that he was gonna end Molly's life. He allegedly tightened his grip and dragged Molly towards the bathroom. With that, Tom started whacking Jason with a baseball bat. And he just kept on striking him until he was considered to be no longer a threat. Once her dad started whacking Jason with a baseball bat, Molly escaped her husband's grip and grabbed the paving stone from her nightstand that she tried to whack Jason with. So both Molly and Tom claimed self-defense and their stories seemed to match up. Molly shared with the detectives that Jason was verbally, emotionally, and physically abusive. She said he gave her injuries that sent her to the hospital a few times, but didn't disclose what Jason did to cause said injuries. However, she did tell investigators that Jason purposely would step on her left foot when he was mad at her, but he would say that it was an accident. After they were questioned, both Molly and Tom were sent home as the police believed it was clear that this was an act of self-defense. An autopsy was performed and the examiner noted at least 12 hits to the same spot on Jason's skull from the baseball bat. This blunt force trauma to the head is what caused him to pass. It was so bad, his skull was technically crushed and his scalp had been ripped off from the skull. Here's a little backstory on him and Molly and how they met. Jason Corbett was born into a working class family in Limerick, Ireland. He was often described as ambitious, confident, and very kind. Jason married a woman named Margaret, whom he had two kids with, Jack and Sarah. When Sarah, who is the younger of the two, was just a few months old, Margaret tragically died from an asthma attack. Jason struggled to take care of both of his young children alone, so in 2008, at age 32, he set out to find a live-in nanny. He then connected with 24-year-old American woman named Molly and flew her out to live with him and take care of his kids. Molly grew up in Knoxville, Tennessee. After graduating high school, she went to Clemson University but dropped out after getting mono. Molly went through several jobs and took a few classes at a community college but never got her degree. As soon as Molly met Jason, sparks were flying. Molly said that she found her purpose taking care of Jack and Sarah. And along the way, she and Jason fell in love. For Jason, his kids now had a mother figure, and it just so happened that Molly was a lovely, attractive person who made him feel whole again. By Valentine's Day of 2010, the two were engaged. Jason told Molly that she could officially adopt the kids as a part of their wedding ceremony, which was a pretty big deal for Molly. In 2011, the couple got married and moved to North Carolina, where Jason was transferred to a role at a packaging plant. Over the next few years, Jason and Molly's relationship started falling apart. It's hard to give both sides because, well, Jason is no longer here to speak for himself, but here's Molly's side of the story. So we already know that Molly says Jason was verbally, emotionally, and physically abusive based on her police interview. She claimed Jason apologized often and his apologies always seemed authentic. It was an endless cycle of Jason lashing out, apologizing, and Molly hoping that he'd change for the better. But things only got worse over time. And both of Jason's kids, Jack and Sarah, told the police that their dad had anger management issues. They said that he and Molly fought often and confirmed Molly's statement that he was physically harmful. Now, according to an employee from Jason's company, Jason didn't want to get a visa using Molly's citizenship because he didn't want her to have any legal grounds to maintain custody if they ended up getting a divorce. And Molly said Jason used the kids to maintain dominance over her, continuing to hurt her without any repercussions. 
in an interview, she said, you just convince yourself, ah, it's not that bad because you gotta wake up in the morning and you just have to keep living life. You have to go to work and you have to pack lunches and you have to clean the kitchen. So you just convince yourself that, ah, I was strangled last night, but I'm gonna be okay. So Molly and Tom were let go of after the questioning, but that didn't mean that they were in the clear. As for the children, Jason's older sister, Tracy, flew to the US as she got custody of them, according to Jason's will. But Molly put up quite a fight to gain custody of the children. She said that she had the right to the kids since Jason hadn't updated his will after they got married and she was technically their stepmom. Well, Molly didn't get her way and the kids were passed on to Tracy who took them back to Ireland. And as devastated as Molly was, she definitely had bigger fish to fry because she was labeled a person of interest alongside of her dad, Tom. In January of 2016, Molly and Tom were charged with second degree murder and involuntary manslaughter. They were absolutely shocked and still claimed self-defense. Right after the incident, Jason's family had cut off all contact with Molly and Tom. Jason's grave didn't even say anything about Molly, nor did they speak about her at his memorial. His sister, Tracy, was certain that Jason was slain out of spite. She believed her brother was planning to leave Molly and move back to Ireland with the kids, which led Molly to do what she did. Once the kids made it back to Ireland, Investigators allegedly conducted another round of interviews where Jack said he was lying about his dad harming Molly. Jack said, we were gonna get interviewed. You know, she was saying a lot of stories, making up stories about my dad, saying that he was abusive, and she started saying that if you don't lie, I'll never see you again. So Molly and Tom both went on trial in July of 2018. The prosecution pointed out how bad Jason's injuries were, basically saying over 12 blows to the head with the baseball bat and a brick, it's not considered self-defense. In their closing arguments, the prosecution accused Molly and Tom of waiting to call 911. By the time the first responders arrived, Jason's body was colder than it should have been if Molly and Tom really called immediately. This brought the prosecution to the conclusion that they waited to call so they can get their story straight. At the end of the trial, Molly and Tom were found guilty of second degree murder and they were sentenced to 20 to 25 years in prison. But that's not the end of this case. In 2020, the NC Court of Appeals overturned Molly and Tom's convictions. Now, as I mentioned earlier, Jack and Sarah first told social workers that Jason was physically and verbally harmful to Molly. The judge didn't mention this in the initial trial, which was something that the prosecution did push for as both kids allegedly recanted their statements. In 2021, the Supreme Court upheld the decision and demanded a retrial. Meanwhile, Molly and Tom were released on bond. And that, my friends, is the terribly conflicting case of Jason Corbett. 